he saw the locals playing a board game and it's everywhere so he uh, went in closer and looked at what they're playing with the stones that they're playing with they were diamonds. Hello fam, welcome to the African Diaspora News Channel. I am Wangil Zalalem bringing you this report. Today we're having a story time of two instances when colonial power stole, exploited natural resources from Africa, which is precious stones, diamonds, and become wealthy by theft, basically. Do you know that the world's largest diamond ever found um, was found in South Africa? And guess where it is right now? I'm sure you guessed it, in Britain, where, maybe that you might not have guessed, it is on the crown of the monarchs, which the queen wears on her head, you will find it on the crown, uh, bedazzling the, the, the crown basically. So the stone was discovered near Pretoria in South Africa on 26th January 1905. So according to the Royal Collection Trust, in its anchored state, it weighed about 3,106 metric carats. The diamond was very huge and heavy, but not only that, it had an extraordinary blue-white color and exceptional clarity, which made it the most celebrated diamond in the world. After the Boer Republic, South Africa were defeated in the battle by the British who went on to institute their leadership throughout modern-day South Africa. In 1907, the diamond was presented to King Edward. Due to the size and composition of the rare gem, it took them nine months with three men working 14 hours a day to cut and polish nine large stones from the original diamond. They made nine diamonds out of it. You can imagine how huge the diamond was and the people that worked on refining the diamond were paid off by the diamond the ones that you know uh, were unnecessary and left off that's how they were paid off so by the way britain says they have not stolen it it was given as a gift a gesture for the war which they won so i don't know why they need to give them a diamond saying oh hey yay now uh, you're our colonizer we're your slaves so here is a diamond to just say thank you um you know it just sounds ridiculous but that's what they claim so that's what i have to tell you so that's the story of how the biggest diamond in the world ended up in the crown of the monarchs of britain and how we went from south africa to europe the other one i want to share with you is in tanzania i felt really bad after hearing this story so i am telling you i can guarantee you you are going to get pissed so how the story goes is there was a geologist um, a canadian geologist named john williamson so he was uh, walking around in tanzania and present-day tanzania and he saw the locals playing a board game and it's everywhere so he uh, went in closer and looked at what they're playing with the stones that they're playing with they were diamonds they were playing with precious stones and so quickly he offered to buy the land from the chief for them those stones were a traditional game for them so when he asked the chief to buy the land the chief just sold it to him so he went and got a license to mine in that place um, he got a permission from the colonial masters and after he got the clear he started mining there and um, he started collecting he started mining getting the diamonds selling and within 10 years he became one of the wealthiest men on earth at that moment but that's not the worst part what he does after that is what is actually cruel uh, in my opinion so he makes it he asks the colonial powers to make it illegal for the locals to use to mine to even touch that precious stone which is diamond so they passed a law that prohibits the locals the people that are born and raised in that in that soil in that ground uh, the people of Tanzania cannot touch that stone. If they do, they will be arrested or worse, lose their lives. So they made it illegal, the colonial power. And this geologist uh, turned businessman, turned wealthiest man alive, made sure to include, make it illegal for the locals to use the resources they have. So they couldn't. Let's take a moment to really think about this. This geologist came to Tanzania to study whatever he wanted to, to study. He saw that the people playing board games with the diamonds and he said, mm -hmm, this is going to make me a lot of money because people outside um, perceive this diamond as uh, an indicator of wealth. 
So he got the license, which is fine, I guess. And he started his business, bought that land, but made it illegal for the locals to do the same thing he's doing, basically maybe sell it or even use it. They were not allowed to. This to me sounded so ridiculous, so crazy that it was hard for me to believe that actually happened, which it did. And um, as I said, he became the wealthiest man alive and by the time he was dying and he was rich. But the locals, let me tell you what happened to the locals. They lost their lands because that land was sold to him. So they were kicked out. For them, it was a traditional game. So they, can't, they no longer can play the games that they wanted to with their own diamonds that they get from their own land, which is their own natural resource. They can't do that. And worst of all, if they're caught using it, touching it, selling it, they will be arrested or put to death. Yeah. Isn't this the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard? It's just really crazy. And um, God, for some reason, blessed Africa with resources like diamond, oil, gas, you name it. But the unfortunate thing is being blessed with natural resources didn't benefit us at all. It actually brought a lot of chaos uh, to us because the rest of the world sees Africa, the continent, and they just see the resources. The potential so in a way people want to or nations want to exploit what Africa has but not necessarily benefit Africa for growth benefit Africa for the betterment of the people you know why because if we grow if we wake up and start thinking for ourselves and we grow we grow financially economically and um, mentally that means we are going to challenge the colonizing powers, challenge the rest of the world. Like for instance, let's just give a simple example. When that guy, the John Williamson I told you about, came and he wanted to, that, to buy that land, the chief would have not sold to him if there was awareness. That means understand what he's selling for peanuts. Um, he probably bought it for less than $1,000. I'm, I'm even willing to bet. So there's that. Secondly, no one would have accepted that kind of law to be passed for a local not being able to use, not being able to sell and get money from their own natural resource. So that's what I mean by if we are in a better place as a people, this, uh, they, are not, they will not be able to exploit us. So you know what the best thing to do is? I can give you an example of Congo. They have cobalt and most of the electronics you and I use every single thing has cobalt. The iPhones you use, the laptops you use. So imagine how valuable Congo's natural resources are for the rest of the world. You might assume that Congo is the richest country in the world, but that is not the case because there's a political instability, economic, like the people are at war. And this is something that happens in most of African countries. If you are the wealthiest when it comes to resources, you are in a messy situation. Your country is not in a good state. So I get it. A lot of nations have a lot to lose if Africa wakes up and says no more. If we're going to trade, we're going to do it fairly. If you're going to buy this for me, I have to be compensated the right way. Um, and even saying no to deals if it's not going to empower your people and your country economically. So yeah, that's how the world's largest diamond has been taken from South Africa or um, John Williamson exploited Tanzania's diamonds. So that's it for today. Do let us know down below in the comment section what your thoughts are. I will see you on the next one. I am Wengil Zalal. I'm bringing you the support. Bye.